May I now request Ms. N. Krishnaveni, Senior Advocate, Chairperson of the Lexicon, to the dais. May I now request our guest speaker, Honorable Mr. Justice N. Anand Venkatesh, to be escorted to the dais. I invite our C. Prithvi Janaj to honor the guest speaker with the moment. I invite Mr. A. Chilambarasan to adorn the guest speaker with the traditional song. Thank you, Lord Chief. Thank you, sir. On behalf of MMBA, I would like to share a few words about the guest speaker. Honorable Mr. Justice N. Anand Pengtesh is the first generation lawyer. His lordship has rich experience in the trial side and is well versed both in civil and criminal law. His lordship is the jack of all trades. He has practiced on the original side, appellate side, criminal side and rich side before the matter psycho. His lordship has also handled service matters before the Central Administrative Tribunal Chennai bench. His lordship was appointed as amicus curiae by the High Court on several occasions. His lordship was a part of the consultation and drafting committee which suggested various improvements in the realm of commercial litigation all over the country which led to the enactment of the Commercial Courts, Commercial Division and Commercial Appellate Division of High Courts Act 2015. His Lordship's seminal verdict pertaining to upliftment of LGBTQIA plus community in Mrs. S. Shushma and others versus the Director General of Police and others has been an ardent decision in the history of our Indian judiciary. In this case, His Lordship has directed the state to compile a glossary on how the LGBTQIA plus community people should be addressed in the society. His Lordship has also written a number of articles in the reputed law journals and recently he has authored a book on the revised 14th edition of Transro Proper Mullah Transro Property Act along with Honorable Mr. Justice V. Lakshmi Narayanan. This book focuses on the impact of contemporary developments and key judicial decisions on the law of Transro Property Act. This book also details certain non-glossary terms pertaining to the Transfer of Property Act. Concern means agreeing or accepting to do something. No man is good enough to govern another woman without her consent. Sexual concern is entirely depending on understanding of partners. But the concern is inadmissible when it is given by an adolescent. Nevertheless, we are witnessing so many cases relating to adolescent sexual concern. Cases of this nature are increasing day by day. Whether it is harmful to the society or not is highly debatable. Contemporary society opens the way for teenage sexual relationship. Right to life and liberty as guaranteed by the constitution is equally available to the minors. On one hand, protecting the right of adolescent. On the other hand, state's responsibility to protect adolescent from sexual exploitation. We have to strike a balance between the two. How to do, what to do is a million dollar question. More understanding, interpretation and in-depth knowledge is the need of the heart. In order to throw limelight in this emerging area, a bar-friendly judge who has handled plethora of POXO cases and recommended separate committee for dealing with the POXO cases is here. Let us be ready to be enlightened on the topic of this session. With this, I would like to request Honorable Mr. Justice N. Anand Venkatesh, Judge Madras High Court, to deliberate about the intrication regarding adolescent sexual concern and books. Good evening to all. Now there is one exercise which we have to do before I proceed further. So when I say one, you will have to clap once. When I say two, you will have to clap twice. Then I, when I say three, you will have to clap thrice. After the end, I will tell you why I made you do it, right? One, two, three, three, two, one. See, what happens is, if you do it, the blood flows. So, the, when the blood flows, 
you will be co- you will come out of your sleepy tendency because uh, i am delivering it after lunch i do not know what srinivas raghavan had in his mind when he did this but uh, it looks like he had uh, some axe to grind against me so he gave me the <laughs> last session when all of you are already tired so i love to make it somehow exciting and uh, with the high level of uh, 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 topics that were discussed by erudite speakers at the end of the day in any serious cinema also you need a comedian just to excite you just to make you lighter and that comedian is the one who is standing just before you so with this i think all of you have woken up so i'll go forward with this Th- i thank uh, mmba for inviting me and to really uh, stand uh, in the midst of uh, the youngsters gives you a lot of energy and uh, to make me talk in the midst of some erudite speakers who have already addressed here meaning the 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 response that was, that they were getting even they were so erudite that i was feeling a bit jittery to really stand here and talk here anyway you have no other go you have to listen to me for the last uh, 30 minutes or so just bear with me i'll try to make it as interesting and as uh, involving as possible um see india is one of the youngest country in the world now india today has 31% of the total population under 18 years that is why world countries are fearing looking at india that's exactly the reason why they fear india because in many countries in even including china the amount of money that they are spending on pensioners is going more than what they are able to earn by uh by uh, by uh, by making people under that age to work so it's becoming so disproportionate and whereas in india you have a 31% population of persons under 18 years of age so with this population keeping in mind this population you are bound to have children who will either be in conflict with law as it is defined under the juvenile justice act or you are bound to have children who are in contact with law namely the victims of or the survivors or the witnesses of crimes so you will have a big population of it so that's very peculiar because of the large population which we are having in such a large country so we needed a child friendly justice for which justice jain was talking about article 15 article 15 specifically touches upon provisions and policies for the benefit of children so that's the source of power from where all these are emanating there are basically three core categories of children whom we are involving here there are three core categories of children the first are the core categories of children whose rights are involved i'll put it that way whose rights are involved here the first category of is the survival rights one is survival rights survival rights is right to be born right to good food right to shelter right to clothing right to good health etc etc these are all survival rights of the children so for example if you want to uh, bring some act in it you have this prenatal uh, diagnostic regulation act just one example for this right which is being safeguarded there are lots of other enactments but this is one example which i want to give so the first core right is the survival right the second right is the development right a child has to develop development right as you all must be knowing it will cover right to education you educate yourself for developing yourself and to get ready to compete in the society to come up in the society so what what is the basis for it again go to constitution now it is guaranteed under article 21 capital a of the constitution of india you have the right to education act this is just an example which i am giving and the third right third type of right the core right is the protection rights 
the prot- under the protection right these are the protection from neglect protection from physical sexual abuses etc this is the third core right which a child is entitled to and it is under this you will have the guardians and wards act you will have the uh, pokso act you will have the child restraint Mar- child restraint marriage restraint act then you will have the juvenile justice act all these will come under this third category so it is this this third right what the first one is survival rights the second is the development rights the third is the protection rights it is this protection right which will be our focus for today's discussion uh, where we are going to specifically touch upon adolescence what is the genesis of this act of this pokso act you will have to understand this genesis i am not going to really bore you with a lot of uh, uh, by reading provisions and all that i will not do it genesis of the act is that you will find uh, that there was uh, a un convention on the rights of the child this was ratified by india and uh, the Uh, and uh, this un convention it uh, was ratified by india in their 1992 1992 it stayed there then there was a case which was brought up before the supreme court which everybody knows is the sakshi case sakshi case was the reason behind this enactment itself so the sakshi case if you want the citation it is 996 acc page 591 sakshi case so that sakshi case is an ngo ngo who filed a public interest litigation before the supreme court and they brought to the to the to the attention of the court that the existing provisions under the indian penal code are not really taking care of the sexual harassment sexual abuse violence that are perpetrated against children so therefore they were pushing for a separate enactment to deal with it the existing provision under the indian penal code was not really helping and this was the purport of filing this public interest litigation before the supreme court and eventually the public interest litigation was disposed of after 5 years after it was filed and uh, the apex court basically requested the parliament to come up with a law to deal with issues pertaining to sexual abuse on children so after this direction was given the pokso bill was tabled in the parliament and it was referred to a standing committee the standing committee submitted its 240th report this came under the 240th report and uh, while doing it the attention of the committee was also drawn to this particular area of debate discussion that area is how are you going to deal with children between the age of 16 to 18 years it's not something new about which we are talking because if you have uh, uh, if you have uh, heard the earlier speaker she was talking about how the age of consent keeps varying in different countries and even our 375 had such a provision it had up to 16 years so there was a big debate which went on where the committee's attention was drawn saying that 16 to 18 deal with them differently see if the consent has been taken is, is there a consent or was there no consent etc so they wanted something to be done for children who were falling within the bracket of 16 to 18 ultimately what happened was that the committee uh, felt that it will once again expose the children please please keep in mind that this was all happening at the period when there was lot of hue and cry from the public saying that children are being abused and you don't have a law so the committee thought if that scope of 16 to 18 is given effect to you are going to go back to the same 375 you are going to go back and again ask the child about what all experiences it had during that particular uh, you know sexual abuse or sexual attack that was made on the child so the committee said no let us not get into it so uh the ultimately they decided that it is going to be 18 so consent no consent 18 and below it is going to be an offence under the pokso act so uh, 
the committee ultimately said that said that once a child is under 18 years of age the element of consent will be irrelevant was how it was concluded and all of you know that this act came into force in 2000 right so uh, we are now in 2023 an act any enactment must basically go in tandem with the realities of the society meaning you cannot have one act and you cannot have the society going in a different direction and the act the object of that very act getting defeated because of the situation in the society not in consonance with the prevailing act so a situation has come where we are attempting to relook we are attempting to think about what has actually happened in this act who was the target group in this act and what was the reality is where i am coming to so after all this what had happened was the uh, the 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 i said that the committee had clearly put the lead saying 18 and consent is uh, irrelevant so uh, so basically two elements weighed in the mind of the committee one is the element of concern should be treated as irrelevant under 18 years and this would be in consonance with the objective of the un that resolution one two consent this is this is very important this is very relevant even now consent raises an issue of revictimization since the victim becomes the focus of a cross examination to determine whether the exception applies or not if you give that elbow uh, 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 space then that 16 to 18 will once again get into what happened how happened what did he do how did you respond all these things the committee was totally against so this is this is how this act came into force uh my dear friends if you really want to appreciate what i want to say you have to have some knowledge of science in this without understanding the science you cannot understand what i am saying number 1 number 2 without looking at it from the perspective of an adolescent person you cannot understand what i am saying at the age of 55 if you look at it you will look at it from a very different perspective but if you look at it from the age of 16 18 19 20 the perspective will be very very different and to, to understand that perspective you will have to know some science so i am not going to bore you but i am going to say that you have absolutely no control because of the types of things which are happening in our brain and body so i will get into the science for some time see basically uh, when it comes to the science the adolescence can basically be divided into three stages it can be divided into three stages the first stage is called as the earlier adolescence that earlier adolescence is between the age 10 and 13 years 10 and 13 years there is something called as the middle adolescence and that middle adolescence is 14 to 16 years and late adolescence which is 17 to 19 years you have to understand this probably you have avoided science and and you had joined law but science will keep on chasing you like this there is no escape from science because if you don't understand science you will never understand this there are lots of areas like that in 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 law and this is very this is one very important area where people continuously try to bring in the so called culture into it and confuse themselves therefore you have to understand the science and then you decide for yourself as to whether how much control an adolescent has right so i said there are three stages the early adolescent is from 10 to 13 years from 10 to 13 years if you look at it this is called as the hypothalamus this is the villain who starts this this hypothalamus which you see in the screen it plays a big role huge role in stimulating the production of sex hormones so if you don't want to get into it remove your hypothalamus you will be normal 
but if you have a hypothalamus then the problem will start at this age this earlier adolescent age so it stimulates the production of sex organs and you know these two things one is the testosterone and the other is estrogen that testosterone is from the testis estrogen is from the ovaries i will make it as simple as possible i don't want to conduct a science class as the last speaker here so this is the one so that the, the that's the next one so that's how it, the the stimulation happens and that's how that urge starts coming meaning it's millions and millions of years human being has gone through this and this is all done for the purpose of reproduction and for the purpose of thriving in this world to have the next generation to go to and that's the whole purpose of uh, this urge this nature has done it only for that purpose the nature did not have any perverse thinking in it the nature wanted to uh, wanted to uh, uh, to establish that that the world thrives that the population comes so that's how it happens so the, i said that the testosterone and the estrogen from the testes and the ovaries and this stimulation happens from the hypothalamus uh, this testosterone and the estrogen they are contained in high concentration in amygdala i think i spoke about amygdala some time back amygdala is this small lime like portion which actually is the seat of emotion for whatever we do aathrathile kallu thuki adikirathu everything happens because of this amygdala so this amygdala is the the, the testosterone and estrogen which are contained in high concentration in amygdala and hippocampus please stay, please put the third third one yes look at this so this is how it actually happens and you will also find something called as the prefrontal cortex about which i will tell you in another 2 minutes so this is what happens at the pre or earlier adolescent stage right so when this happens this amygdala and hippocampus play a very pivotal role in the context of a teenage romance since they are exceptionally sensitive uh, to behavior intuition and uh, pleasure etc etc right then comes the middle adolescence the middle adolescence is between the age of 14 to 16 in so far the middle adolescence is concerned the experience of a strong sexual drive happens during this period this middle adolescence period what i am saying is that these are things which are happening inside the body over which you do not have a control right so it's 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 happening and i said that for the present i am not going to talk about prefrontal cortex because there is a reason why i said it so this is happening nature has built us in a particular way where it starts giving these impulses into us and you cannot go and just pick your hypothalamus and throw it away meaning it it is it is happening the changes are happening the hormones are secreting because of the secretion of the hormone there are certain stimulants that are happening in the body then comes the last stage which is the late adolescence so this is this period this late adolescence i said is the period from 17 to 19 years and there is a sort of maturity that is involved in this period from 17 to 19 years some sort of a maturity is available um the then in so far as the hormones that are triggered i i told you that hormones are being triggered during this adolescent period they produce broadly three types of uh, uh, impulses which is one lust one is lust second is attraction and the third is attachment so the one is lust second is attraction third is attachment this is how i have broadly put it prefrontal cortex is the one which 
completely matures at the age of 23 years and if you had carefully uh, listened to uh, uh, justice uh, dhammasesha dinaidu in the morning he was talking about when you use it more it grows if you stop using it it shrinks is what he said and that's exactly the most vital portion of why we are a human being is only because of this and the complete maturation actually comes at 23 years therefore there is that is one more factor which which actually is disadvantages to persons in that age group because they do not have this complete capacity to take a complete thoughtful decision at that age apart from the secretion of hormones there is this is yet another factor which does not or which which makes them incapable of taking a reasoned decision please keep that in mind because all of us who are sitting here i think so uh, we have this prefrontal cortex how far we have it i do not know but uh, and if uh, that's why i said you should not look at it from this position you have to look at it from a position where there is a secretion of hormone and you do not have the fully grown prefrontal cortex that is how you will have to look at this issue correct now going into this the, i said the there are three impulses which comes out which is the lust the attraction and the attachment so i have put it i i thought that more than telling you the words the complicated words you can look for yourself what are those things which actually um, uh, 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 sort of pushes that particular type of emotion for the lust those are the two uh, and for the attraction those are the three and for attachment those are the two and this uh, last one this oxytocin and vasopressin this oxytocin and vasopressin are the hormones which are very closely associated with what madam said the romeo juliet issue that's the one which is closely related to that romantic love the, the last one which i said the oxytocin and the and the 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 the, the vasopressin vasopressin this uh, this understanding is very important unless you know this you will never understand why certain things happens at that age and why that impulse happens and please keep one thing in mind again that also madam said the exposure that we had and the exposure that the present day children have is very very different i used to tell it jocularly that waiting since i have also undergone all this waiting in a bus stand with a girl sitting in a bus 200 meters that side in one corner seat she turns and looks at you three days it is enough for you that is the distance with which we used to look at girls right when i am speaking it i should not be speaking from here like some sage since everybody has undergone somebody has to admit as to what he underwent i don't have the shyness to uh, to admit all these things right uh, if i have that i cannot even discuss about it so that was enough and that's the maximum amount of exposure you can have or probably she is in that corner of the street you are in this corner of the street those were the type of exposures which we had today what is the type of exposure you have you have given a satan into their hands and one touch into it you get lot of things out of it please look at the challenge already they are gripped with this hormonal problem they don't have the complete formation of their brain their prefrontal cortex is not allowing them to think for themselves apart from that this satan kindles them so what happens is that they try to explore it they try to get into it because it gives them a very congenial atmosphere today it is not very difficult for a girl and a boy to meet uh, even though i feel very sad about it but but then uh, since i did not get that opportunity that's fine but in any case uh, what i am saying is if that situation 
arises now it, it, i what i am saying may be a big joke now comes the danger right so we have gone up to that then a situation comes an atmosphere uh, create is created where they get into a sexual uh, act right let me be very frank here if many of us had fallen under that situation we would have been convicted under pokso this is not joke please understand the science behind it please understand the the type of uh, the type of changes and uh, things that can happen within your body which is completely out of your control and a situation is also created the world is creating a situation your gadgets are creating a situation and today uh, today father mother goes for work see so many things are happening today so it's very easy for a boy and a girl to get together is what i'm saying that's exactly what i'm saying if that situation was there even earlier i am sure that there was nothing new that would have happened this this hormonal changes this and all is happening for millions of years here so please have this in your mind probably what i said probably what i said would be very gross to you but as a last speaker you will have to put it in such a gross manner just to make keep you awake just to make you think as to what this man is suddenly coming and saying so this please keep in your mind so there is a natural relationship because of this attraction this natural relationship which is involving two persons in their teenage becomes notorious when it becomes notorious when the relationship transcends this platonic limits and it gets into the realm of sexual relationship that is where the problem is when it comes to this adolescent relationship as one of the earlier speakers said there is a conflict between a factual consent and a legal consent this is exactly the real conflict right having understood this what is the object of this pokso legislation that is very important because i said the committee was formed they gave recommendation this that what is the object of the pokso legislation protection of children from one sexual exploitation to sexual abuse i'll again repeat protection of children from sexual exploitation and sexual abuse this is the whole object of pokso enactment right what is the ground reality we are now talking about the ground reality after more than 20 years after the pokso came into effect and it is our duty to talk about it because it involves child's right it involves children's right so we have to talk about it it's very important what is the ground reality what is the majority of the people who are booked under this legislation under this act who are charged under this act in a 2017 study that was conducted in tamil nadu this was conducted by indian council for child welfare they took 118 cases apprehended under the pokso act out of which 53 cases which is what something like 45% 45% was the case of elopement and love affair 45% was elopement and love affair this is a 2017 study what did i say the object of pokso was to protect children from sexual exploitation and sexual abuse correct keep that in your mind see what is happening in reality is the is it going in that direction or the whole purpose of this enactment is getting defeated is what you have to think for yourself so this is one study there is a study between 2013 to 2015 that happened in delhi there out of 526 complaints 28 persons 28 percentage 28 percentage are adolescents between the age group of 16 to 18 years and it resulted in 90% acquittals 
90% acquittals either because the girl did not support or because they were not prepared to come to court or, or they, they said that we want to compromise whatever was the reason 90% is the acquittal look at the amount of energy that would have gone into these cases apprehending arresting producing before magistrate remanding the, the boy undergoing this there is a lot of problem that happens on the girl side they are all destroyed and ultimately the person gets acquitted person gets acquitted right now 2022 there was a study of pokso cases in india that study was conducted in eight states totally eight states that study was conducted for the periods 2014 15 16 17 uh, then uh, 1920 in all cases of consensual relationship 75 uh, 95 percent of the cases ended in acquittal these are staggering figures these are not small figures i am talking about these are really staggering figures then in 2022 1715 decisions involved romantic relationship involved romantic relationship by the special courts from maharashtra west bengal assam this was analyzed there 93.8 percent ended in acquittal so what is the ground reality what are these numbers telling us it is very important to know what are the numbers telling us one the ground reality is that first using the criminal law to regulate adolescent sexuality is futile going by the acquittal rates it is a futile exercise it is lot of energy consumed lot of families destroyed lot of uh, time of the measure of the judiciary has been taken and for what for showing acquittal in all the cases that is number one number two it is actually overburdening the criminal justice system like how the 138 finished off the criminal justice system and the people who are doing 138 cases suddenly thought that they are criminal side lawyers this spoke so has virtually overburdened the criminal justice system and obviously you know the type of hype that goes on we have our whatsapp and this and that and you you keep on writing stories after stories after stories and and ultimately all that is acquittal only then the third is by the time it ends in acquittal in any way in the trial court or it is quashed by a high court under 482 the life of an adolescent boy comes to a grinding halt now look at this case there is a quash petition that comes up before me i look at the quash petition the petitioner is the complainant so i thought it is after lunch and probably i am not awake again i saw the petitioner is the de facto complainant then i slowly asked the lawyer complainant is the petition yes my lord complainant is the petition i said i have never seen a complainant file a quash petition normally the accused will, no no lord complainant is the quash then i said is the complainant here what is the case she is he, the counsel said it's a pokso case so the mother was there the mother straight away told me that yam ponnu ga and payanoda or palaga irundadunga ipo yam ponnu kalyanam panni vekkanum neenga and case quash pannunga uh, stunned uh, that's how she dictated me she said i am quash panni ponnu na kalyanam pannunga indha case la vechindala namma nalla panna mudiyadhu then i said you please ask the girl to come then the girl girl came see this is where uh, the reality strikes you the girl comes i asked the boy also to be released on interim bail exercising my 482 i asked the boy also to be produced before the court then the girl comes i call that girl that girl tells me that girl is something like 17 years or something like that that girl tells me that uh, uh, i am school ku poi irupen ivaru vandu auto ottra varan edathla apdiye rendu perum paathu paathu palakamai pochu enga veetla kalyanathukku paaka aarambichitaanga indha vishayam therinju pochu enga veetla kalyanathukku paaka aarambichitaanga adukku mela mudiyadhu na i forced him i said you take me elsewhere uh, the, uh, then that girl tells me how you all go on on sonnaringa 
அந்த பையனுக்கு வயசு இருபது அவர் எவ்வளோ வானான்னு தான் சொன்னார் வானான் நான் ஆட்டோ ஓட்டினருக்கேன் இன்னும் நான் வாழ்க்கையில் செட்டில் ஆகணும் ஸோ ப்ளீஸ் ஐ செட் நோ யூ ஹாவ் டு டேக் மீ அவே த பாய் வாஸ் ஃபோர்ஸ் டு டேக் திஸ் கேர்ள் அவே அண்ட் தி ஹார்மோன்ஸ் ப்ளே தேர் கேம் தென் then uh, the, uh, the both of them are caught boy sent to the police station uh, sent to the jail and he was inside for 7 months uh, it was at the stage of quashing uh, of the charge sheet or something came before me now i see the boy pathetic he is an auto driver he is eking his livelihood from that and the boy has no idea as to why he was arrested why he everybody is looking at him like some criminal then i call him and he tells me the same story he told me the same story and that is how i wrote that vijay lakshmi judgment it really struck me because before me justice parthivan wrote an erudite judgment it is i consider it one of the most classical judgments on pokso and everybody must read that judgment it was a it was an eye opener even for me it was such a classical judgment in his own in, uh, style he wrote that uh, judgment and that was a big inspiration for me to write the vijayalakshmi judgment but that is one that is where you f- the reality strikes you then of course that judgment was written and you will find that across india it has been followed now across india it has been followed today it is pending before the apex court for a final decision because today the problem is that uh, uh, that uh, we cannot uh, legislate we can only try to help out people we cannot legislate on anything so what happened was that a pokso committee is there already formed with the judges we had an interaction with the police then we told the police that whenever a case of elopement or this love affair comes kanmudi thanama don't go and arrest them Uh, meaning for every case don't arrest is not the solution give them a summon under section 41a of crpc on a case to case basis you decide after that was done we had a series of meetings with the police officials and all that the arrest rate has come down rate has come down and the second instruction which we gave was please don't imagine and write something all their perversity will come in that 161 statement because th- they have so many things in mind which they were not able to do so they will write all that in their 161 statement so we said don't do it you are going to write exactly what that girl is saying which means that what is recorded under 164 and what is recorded under 161 will be in tandem right if that is in tandem and some consent is there we said there will be some mechanism let them come before the high court we are all sitting readily for that in 482 we will <laughs> we'll call them and we kept quashing one after the other in almost all my brothers were were fall, re, uh, regularly following it because everybody was concerned about it everyone was concerned about what was uh, happening so this is one mechanism which we have followed in tamil nadu which has really brought it sort of under control but these are all temporary mechanism this does not really cure the uh, real problem that lies so the next question is i have told you what the problem is so the next question is do the boys and girls falling und- within this bracket do they have any rights at all that's the next question what what are we talking about what rights are we talking about i have identified some rights For the first right is autonomous choice to be in the company of one another this right is traceable to article 21 of the constitution of india and this right has been spoken by the supreme court in the case of national legal services authority case that is in 2014 5acc page 438 this judgment deals exhaustively about this autonomous choice to be in the company of one another then second right of dignity and privacy we think that we have the right to go into the life of somebody else and thrash them and finish them off just because they are aged about 17 years 18 years 19 years we take that right in our hands because we all think that we are angels that's the problem the problem is that we all think that we are angels we never had any such thought and we are next to god most of us are scoundrels 
fortunately we were not caught so let us when we decide cases when we think over these cases let us face reality let us put ourselves into that position and then think about it so the second right that is undermined according to me for adolescents is their bodily integrity and dignity under article which is again traceable to article 21 of the constitution of india i will have to trace it for somewhere the, it, it is traceable to article 21 of the constitution of india then third is depriving the liberty of the adolescent boys see you arrest boys who are under consensual relationship and the boys are treated as boys or child in conflict with law the girls are treated as victims of crime recently a case came before us in a bench where this boy and girl studying in some school this boy ties a thali in a bus stand right uh, the students took photo and it, they started uh, uh, sort of forwarding it in uh, the society said where are we going we are going nowhere some playful thing has happened in a bus stand and that boy was aged about 16 years that girl was aged about 15 years that's all they went to the house of that boy arrested him arrested him took him to the jj court kept in the home after this was brought to our notice we released them and that's where we said that we want to have a dedicated bench for uh, following up these uh, cases because he is going uh, going out of and boy is now treat, he is he is now uh, dealt with under jj boy is, please understand under pokso child is <laughs> gender neutral child is not one, just girl child it is gender neutral but the boy is dealt with under jj act the girl is the victim under the pokso act that's the problem so we had to call that case squash it meaning we like that meaning we keep on quashing like that but the, the what happens during the interregnum period that boy's education is gone the boy the society sees that boy like some hitler uh, the, uh, i do not know what what more will happen obviously they will they will have to move away from that place and stay elsewhere because in and around people are going to say that in the vaisal idella epdi pa nee panna idella nyayama irukku see that's the reaction which the society is going to give correct so it deprives the liberty and in many cases the girls don't want to go with their parents they are sent to their homes and i do not want to say much on these homes it is pathetic to say the least so to that extent their liberty is deprived again traceable to article 21 of the constitution of india then the fourth one is right to sexual and reproductive growth this gets deprived particularly because of the mandatory reporting under section 19 of the pokso act so this was yet another lesson which we learnt and i learnt it more from my brother justice satish kumar you know in nilgiris that these todas these uh, the, the 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 people who are tribes they get married at 16 15 and all that so what used to happen is after marriage the girl will become pregnant she will be brought to the government hospital government hospital under section 19 will inform it to the police police will arrest that fellow and suddenly that fellow will find himself inside a jail he will be thinking i married uh, meaning she became pregnant why are they arresting me and it's not one or two cases my dear friends almost 800 cases so all of a sudden nilagiris had pendency of something like 920 cases or something of pokso people were looking at nilgiris as something like any child goes out is raped and the, well, the reality is then i spoke with my brother uh, satish kumar on this then he enquired because he he hails from that place he enquires and this is what we find and i am I, i was told that some cases were quashed uh, it was filed and quashed and all that so this is where the right to sexual and reproductive growth that goes meaning then they ask for uh, uh, 19 if they don't uh, inform then uh, that is an offense punishable under the pokso irudale kolli id meaning uh, meaning if you if you don't report you are finished if you report they are finished that's the type of provision which you are having in uh, pokso and um, there was a similar provision in south africa 
this is how I wanted to conclude it. There was one uh, similar provision that was uh, found in South Africa that was a case called as Teddy Bear Clinic for Abused Children case. Teddy Bear Clinic for Abused Children case. You can find this in 2013 SEC online. EZACC page 35. They had a very similar provision which is section 15.1 of the act. So, it, the, it, it, uh, it is almost like our Indian provision only. They went into all these things and uh, what was held ultimately was that, I will just read that portion only. There can also be no doubt that existence of a statutory provision that punishes forms of sexual expression that are developmentally normal. Please uh, look at these words. I, I told you how the development takes place. Developmentally normal degrades and inflicts a state of disgrace on adolescents. To my mind, therefore, the stigma attached to adolescents by the impugned provision is manifest and it was quashed. It was held to be unconstitutional there. So, other countries are also having situations like that and they are dealing with situations like that because at the end of the day, across the world, everybody is going to have this hormonal problem. It's not going to be peculiar to India. This is a universal problem. Anybody who is born as a human being will have to go through all these things. So, this was the, this was the type of reaction that happened or took place in uh, South Africa. So, what is the way forward? What is, how is it that we have to deal with it? I will I'll just say that and leave it to your uh, uh, thought. According to me, one, the age of consent. Now, we have a 23, 22, 23 year old, uh, 22 years of experience in this. I have already told you where it all led to. So, my first suggestion is that the age of consent, which is the definition of a child must be reduced to 16 years in India so as to bring the consensual sexual relationship including minors outside the purview of POCSO Act. See, the reason is I had this data as to what is happening in other countries but the previous speaker has already given you the complete data as to what was the age of consent in different countries in France, USA, this, that. You will find that it is all averaging 16. 15, 14, there are countries where it is 14 also. So, 16, that is number one. Number two is, this is very important, number two is the closing age exception. This is something to be taken into account. There are countries which says that children who are aged about 12 years, the age can never be below 12, meaning that is not the age where even adolescence starts. So, about 12 years and the gap between two adolescents, two persons who had this consensual sexual relationship is not more than three to four years gap. You understand? Meaning 16 years, 20 years, something like that. Three years, four years gap because even there you are you are under the grips of that. You have not really moved out and that is a very natural attraction which comes. Correct? So, they are now getting into this issue of closing age exception. There are countries which are following it. There are countries which say 4 years, 3 years, 6 years. So, that a, 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 a person of 30 years does not take uh, advantage saying that I had consensual sexual relationship with a 16 year old girl. Meaning, so understand that you must put both of them in that plank and understand it or else or else it will be misused. So, therefore, this is another safeguard which can be brought in. Then the third is the person with whom the consensual sex happens must not be in a position of trust or authority. Meaning, a person who is a close relative, a person who teaches, who is a teacher, you, today we find 21 year old teachers and all that, right? 20 year old. In engineering colleges, since it is all temporary appointment, it is 20 year old teacher only. M many cases. They get attracted. He is in a position of trust. He is in a position of trust. This happens too much in gym trainers. Because of their proximity to that girl. 
so again you cannot say that it is consensual meaning that's a position where he is under authority and probably she goes for there for something and this fellow uh, misuses it and he knows exactly uh, how to misuse and uh, build the uh, the the uh, the uh, confidence of that girl it happened very recently in one of the cases the girl comes and tells us that gym trainer is already married and he has two children she says in spite of it i'll go only with him she was 17 and she says even if you make me go with my parents 18 i will go with him then the, my brother who was sitting next to me said that don't put the next question if she asks some terrible questions then you will be uh, caught he said you better dictate start dictating the order don't ask her one more question unkene vandan keta see problem we do not know with the way in which she was responding in court i was th- the third question she was almost here then the brother said uh, don't put any more questions this is enough so the third criteria which can be seen is consent given by a by a person who is in a position of trust or authority trust or authority then the fourth thing is that sensitive issues committee must be appointed there must be a committee which must it was a committee which had started which deliberated which took into consideration the recommendation that was made by the parliament and then it at that point of time said that no let the 18 be there let the consent no consent let now the committee must again come into the picture and they must again get into this by looking at datas all across the country and the committee must work into it and deliberate in all these uh, things and last but not the least the the right of the adolescents for a consent to have that um, right of uh, the the they to have the where they have an affair because of the biological changes must be recognized you have to look at it from the point of view of science or else there is no way you can really get in control of this so with this i thought i can finish my speech thank you Thank you, Lord Shiv, for clarifying the integration with scientific approach. I would like to invite Ms. Preeta to come over to the dais to give her understanding about the topic. Distinguished guests, dignitaries, advocates, and students, good evening to one and all present here. I am very much honored to present my observation on behalf of the audience to the star speaker. At the same time, my cortisol level increases because. <laughs> i am in the middle that i couldn't enjoy the science class which lot should taken as we enjoy in our school like uh, when the adolescent chapter comes every boys will be and every girls oh this is the thing i was expecting <laughs> and in the meanwhile i am to take the notes for my presence of speech also thank you lordship uh, for your intellectual insight into the nuances of a very common a traumatic experience which the children are facing today though the poxa has act has been in existence for more than a decade uh, its effective implementation has given taken momentum only after the interpretations given by the given to the provisions by the judges of various honorable high courts and supreme courts one of the most important delegate aspect of the act is the consent which is given by a child to the perpetrator without realizing or understanding the gravitas of the act committed and it is often repented by the child when it becomes an adult lordship beautifully held the aftermath of such concern given by the child not only by the child uh, the aftermath which caused to the boy also which is a gray area and lordship be- meticulously held the issue even by citing the uh, citations but lordship didn't do uh, like giving pull stuff or comma when he used to give in dictations <laughs> and lordship explained it in a more simple manner so that everyone can understand this lordship had travel uh, with this issue from uh, nilgiri to south africa united states tamil nadu like so much of meticulous aspects he has been dealt with which is very difficult to summarize in this 2 minutes of opportunity i've got yet the analysis given by your lordship today would prove immense 
assistant to the people present here and also to those who hark it through the social media. We only wish that the message conveyed by your Lordship reaches all these stakeholders and police members and members of Child Welfare Committee. We wholeheartedly thank your Lordship for having been dealt with the important aspect of the POXO Act. I want to record the quote which is quoted by the father of modern South Africa, none other than Nelson Mandela. There can be no keen revaluation of the society's soul than the way in which it treats its children. I especially thank my senior, beloved senior Srinivasa Raghavan sir for giving me such a wonderful opportunity <laughs> to present my observation over here. Thank you one and all present here. Thank you so much. Thank you Preeta for your wonderful feedback. Thank you Lordship. Thank you Chairman Ma'am.